The topics and opinions expressed in the following show are solely those of the hosts and their guests and not those of W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our web. No liability, explicit or implied, shall be extended to W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. Any questions or comments should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for choosing W4CY Radio. Welcome to the Ask the Expert show on W4CY Radio and Talk 4 TV, where we bring you educational information from top local experts in the fields of legal, health, financial, and home improvement. Now sit back and listen to experts in family law, association law, hearing loss, business brokers, home care, along with many other topics. Now here are your hosts, Steve-O and Sophia. Hey, good morning, Tampa. Welcome to another Ask the Expert show where we bring you the top experts in the field of legal health, financial, and home improvement. You're going to have to excuse me today. I had a wisdom to pull last week, and I had major problems with it yesterday, and so I had to go into the uh, dentist office, find one, because mine does not offer emergency service. So I'm kind of packed up today. So you'll have to excuse me, but we've got such a great guest. There's no way I would miss this show for anything. Let me introduce you to our expert, attorney, Debbie Baker. Uh, Well, that's why you look puffy. (laughs) Oh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Not good. But no. see how important you are. Oh, oh my gosh! But I'm saying he looks different this morning. And <laughs> no, no meditation. Anybody else, attorney? You want to call in? You want to call in? I called in sick. Oh my gosh! You know what? I got to tell you something. I, after 12 years of doing this, I finally woke up to the fact that estate planning is without a doubt the most important area of law. It's no longer landlord-tenant. No, I'm kidding you. Uh, But no, estate planning is what you hold in your hands for your client is the most important thing there is. And I wanted to share that with you this morning. And we're so lucky to have you because... When you explain to the audience, you make it so easy to understand. And estate planning is not the easiest thing. It's rather, a lot of times, complex. But you care about people so much. And I just want to tell you how blessed we are to have you. So welcome again. Thank you. And, And you're a sweet person, too. So... Tell everybody about your practice. You have the most interesting story. My practice. Um, You know, my practice is estate. Yeah, well, I'm going, my practice is estate planning. I do estate planning, wills, trusts, probate, do some elder law. Um, And it's all, it's, it's all in the, under the umbrella of, well, fulfilling on God's sending me to law school and then continuing to work in an area where I can be of service. So I, I, I know you have questions, but a perfect example of why, two perfect examples of why I really love what I'm doing yesterday. I'm really not good at small talk. Um, and I, they did a tea at church and um, recently and <laughs> I was just talking to a woman who'd been widowed recently, and I said, do you have your documents? And she said, no, they're all in place. You know, that my son's going to take over. And I said, well, okay. And you have a grandchild. And she said, well, yeah. And if I die, her father gets everything. And then I said, well, here's our challenge. If he dies before you, that child who is now not quite five cannot inherit money. Um, until until she's 18. Well, won't her mother get it? I said, well, her mother will get it, but you may not want her to have my, you may not want the mother to have it 
because you may want certain amounts of money to be set aside for the child when she gets older. Not that you don't trust the mother at all. I said, that's one thing. And the other thing is right now you've got your son. We talk a lot on this show about beneficiary designations and you need to have beneficiary designations, which is who's going to take, get your liquid assets after you pass. And people don't realize oftentimes that they need that's step one, but you need step two because if if the person in step one predeceases and you don't have a step two, you're going to wind up in a probate court because you didn't know, not because you didn't care, but because you didn't know. Which is expensive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, probate's a lot more expensive than just changing the documents now. Or the, the beneficiary designations don't even cost anything. So I said you need to put. She said, well. Doesn't doesn't my daughter-in-law get it? I said, no, not automatically. In fact, your granddaughter gets it, and that's where the complication is. She said, how much will it cost me to do this? I said, you know, she's somebody I know. I said, well, it won't cost you more than a few hundred thousand dollars, but she went, I said, I don't do it for the money. I do it for the service. So that was one example. And another one is a friend whose husband is really no longer competent to be her personal representative. That's her will if she dies or her power of attorney, which is while she's living to make financial decisions, or her healthcare surrogate. And I said, have you done anything about that? And she said, no, I, I don't really think about it. And I said, well, something you might want to think about, even if, so right now she probably has her husband and then one of her sons, more than likely. I said, even if you switch them, so at least your son would be first, so you don't take your husband completely out of the document, and she said, oh, I never thought about it. And, I, and, and so for me, the passion for doing this and for learning more, which you do, you know, you've learned tons more about what you do over the years. And you look back and think, how incompetent was I when I started, right? But I was ex- like, or Rebel when she was saying she was on stage at five, right? So, so the competency grows, the assurance grows, and then the, the counsel I give people gets better. And I've said this before. I don't care if people work with me. I mean, it's nice, but I don't care. If you've got an attorney that you love, don't don't work with me. If you've got an attorney that you trust, don't work with me. Just take my questions and say to, say to these people, what do I do? So my story is, and that's all my story. My story is I, I, I coached people for 30 years in the world of performance and hard choices and difficult decisions. And the law is the same thing. I mean, does this woman whose husband's really no longer competent run the risk of offending him terribly by switching documents? Does she tell him she's doing it? Does she make people co, but give the the younger person the right to override the, I I mean, I don't know the answer. I just think they're important questions. And so that's, that's kind of who I am and what I do. And that was a long winded answer, but anyway. (laughs) We have plenty of time. Um, Explain to people, What is estate planning? Estate planning is looking into your world and knowing that you have assets, whatever those are, um, or bounty, as the legal term is. A will is about what does a person, is a person signing a last will and testament knowing that it declares what they want to do with their bounty. Now, that word's not in the will, but that's the legal jargon, as I remember. It's not mutiny on the bounty. It's bounty, like whatever. So if I looked around my office, <clears throat> there's it's all stuff in my office. Um, that's tangible personal property. That's a different way. But an estate plan will allow you to lay out what you want done with all the money you might have, whatever that looks like. If it's coins in, um, we save, I save, Nick, Nick, actually, I save. Nickels, dimes, pennies, and quarters. Who knows why? But I do. I and um, I have. I have. I don't know that I have thousands of dollars, but I have hundreds of dollars, and I hate to wrap them up because then I have to start filling the bottle again. So anyway, um, but that's part of your bounty. Well, you might say, you know, um, you might have a piggy bank that you've had since a child. My husband had one that unfortunately got stolen. But you might have a piggy bank you've had since a child, and you want that to go to a specific person. It's full. You have no idea how much is in it, but you want that piggy bank with whatever's in it to go to a certain person. Well, you would want to write that down. Um, Or you have um, CDs that matured and you never never cash them in. 
but you want to be sure you've designated who they go to. That's beneficiary designation. So that's part of the estate plan because if you write down, you want them to go to Sophia, let's say, um, and you haven't put her on that piece of paper and you're not married, she doesn't have a legal right to that that money. Whoa. Your, your family yeah. has a legal right to that money. Your, your blood family, whether it's children or parents or nieces and nephews. So she, Sophia, whom you've been with for a long time, as much as you may think, of course it's hers because we've been together all these years. That's good thinking, logic. <clears throat> but if you go to a court of law, um, unless you've written it down somewhere, even in your will, that says Sophia gets all my money markets or CDs. She doesn't have a leg to stand on if people in your blood family say, sorry, we never liked you. We don't care how much Steve has. We're going to argue. We're going to fight you for it. Um, so estate planning is putting that all, you know, you said at the very beginning, it's the most important part of law, whatever. Just what I do is what estate planners do. It's helping people pull together what they have in one place in their mind and putting it down on paper so people are going to take care of them in this life or take care of what they have after the after they're gone do what you say you want and there's great peace of mind in this extraordinary peace of mind in getting it done and i know my personally i keep coming up with things um, i'm going to have my colleague and mentor review my estate plan because I did it years ago and I did it with somebody I didn't know. We just decided to do it. It was finally time. And I'm thinking, holy mackerel, Deb, you know, you need to be sure that every, you've got everything in place. Um, so that's what estate planning is. It's just, it doesn't matter how much and money you have. It doesn't matter. Debbie, who needs to have an estate plan? Um, well, people really struggle at hearing this. Uh, at one second after midnight on an 18th birthday, whoever that 18 year old is needs an estate plan. And people say, that's crazy. They're only 18 or they don't have anything. Right? I get it. Um, I learned about that years ago when I was a sort of semi active associate with, with one of the prepaid legal uh, programs. When somebody told the story of an 18 year old who had had a catastrophic injury um, in a car accident, didn't have a will. Why would an 18 year old have a will? He was raised by his mom. His father had nothing absolutely to do with him. And because he didn't have a will, um, when the, when this, when the um, wrongful death or personal injury thing settled, his father got 50% of that money because there was no will. Um, so that's the tragic piece of it. Um, Camp Lejeune cases, the people who are families or victims of the Camp Lejeune, they need to do, if there's no if there's no will, or they need to do a probate so they can be in line for their family descendants, the spouse and family of the people who died as a result of that, to collect a class action settlement. But the biggest thing that people, 18-year-olds struggle with that, which is understandable, um, and parents don't understand that they cannot call a doctor anymore once that child turns 18. They can't call a teacher anymore once that child's 18. They can't access bank accounts if that child has one in their own name once that child is 18. They have no legal rights other than to, they, have, they don't even have a legal demand to support them anymore, but they have no legal rights to help them without the child saying, saying so. Um, and then any, any asset, I mean, you, you mentioned recently, Steve, that you did your first plan when you were 27 or 28 because your brother is an attorney and said, you will do this. And you said, OK, OK. Um, <laughs> but I don't remember you saying you had a lot of assets that you you know owned a fancy car or owned a home or anything. You may have, but you weren't married. And you, I, as I remember, you didn't have a family. So why would you do it? Except that he was smart enough to say you're 27 years old. And if God forbid something happens to you, you need to put me in charge. You need to put some, you need to let somebody know what you want. Um, but once you're 18, you need one, whoever, whoever it is. Um, 
And I, 18 is the legal age of adulthood, I think, in every state. It may not be the drinking age, but it's the legal age of adulthood. And that's a determining factor. So that's who needs it, everybody over 18. I'll bet you you've seen some hellacious cases of people who didn't plan. Oh, horrible. Horrible, horrible cases. Tra tragic mostly for the impact. I mean, I think of the first, actually, I don't know if it was the first probate I did, but it was one where this woman died and she had quite a bit of money. Let's say she had a million dollars. I don't know if it was quite that much. But somehow or other, she had beneficiary designated half of it. And she ha hadn't beneficiary designated the other half. So it cost her family, I think, about $9,000 to get it done. And it could have cost them nothing if she had just called whoever had the other half of the money. And so that was tragic. It was tragic. It was it was complicated. Yes. The woman she'd appointed lived in England. She couldn't do it easily because she didn't live in the city and documents needed notarizing. And then we had to get waivers from everybody to appoint a nephew. And 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 it it was crazy. I mean, it it, it was crazy. And other things are just right now I've got one where um a woman died before she died. Her power of attorney signed the title of the car over to a stepson. And the woman died in Florida. It's the only place I'm, I can practice. And he lives in New Jersey. And, and the Motor Vehicle Bureau up in New Jersey is giving him a hard time about transferring the title. Now, if they'd done it while she was living, probably he wouldn't have had any trouble. But now they're doing it with a power of attorney and a death certificate. And so he's got to demonstrate that it was really done legitimately and nothing of great value, but it's the emotional impact of, of not planning. People keep continuing to think, you know, like you and Sophia leave your, leave your house to a favorite niece or nephew and you think, oh, it's my will. Well, that's great. And you have to go to court to get it. It's not, it's great. I mean, it's good that you did that, but it's not great in terms of what your loved one is going to have to do to get it. So, and those are horrific because they, they could have easily been avoided. Oh, absolutely. They could have been avoided. Well, hence my stories at the beginning about, have you thought about this? Have you thought about this? And people go, no, I never thought about that. I thought it was straightforward. No, no. How? How does somebody choose who to represent them? It's really, it can be really hard. Um, the thing I've seen recently where like somebody's older and they've appointed their spouse and then they realize, oh my gosh, my spouse is this, and I mean older 70s, 80s, you know, whatever. I'm not talking about the 30 year old thinking somebody 40 years old, you know, 70s, 80s. And they think, oh my gosh, that person is no longer, that person couldn't handle that emotional um, roller coaster, making healthcare decisions, whatever. Um, you have to really, well, for the healthcare surrogate and the power of attorney, huge, huge amounts of trust. In Florida, powers of attorney go into effect as soon as you sign them. And every one of them includes the ability to make banking transactions, deposits, withdrawals, like write checks, minimal, minimally, minimally. Well, your power, and I've seen it. I haven't experienced it personally. I've heard you give somebody power of attorney, they, they could literally clean you out. They could sell your home wow. because they have a power of attorney. It's, 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 it's one of the standard, it's not, it's a standard power in a power of attorney. Um, and in Florida, you really cannot do limited powers of attorney. So a limited power of attorney is where you and Sophia have moved out of state. You're selling your home in Florida and you, you hire me, you appoint me limited power of attorney for the express purpose of selling your home at one, two, three main street. That's as far as it goes, because you're not going to, this is before DocuSign and all that. You're not coming back to Florida to sign sales agreements. So you appoint somebody to do it for you. Um, 
I had that. I had. I did that once because my client lived in New Jersey and has no computer technology. She barely has a phone. Uh, so, 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 healthcare service. You really have to appoint some. You've got to appoint somebody who's going to do what you want at the end of your life. Whatever, whatever that is, not what they want, not what they would do, but what you would do. And you have to be careful because some people won't. They'll keep you alive when you don't want to be, or they'll let you go when you don't want to be. So, so hard. And, and that's a great conversation for an attorney to have as a counselor. Like, you got to really trust. But I think I should. you got to really trust. I hear what you're saying, and I get that it's hard. And you got to really trust. you just got to really trust. Um, so, yeah, those are some of the hard choices. Hard choices. Who do you leave a home? Who do you leave the home to? What do you leave the car to? No easy, no easy choices, necessarily. If for people who are not watching right now, who are listening on radio, uh, my dear friend has had her cat, her co-star of our show. <laughs> what do people do who have pets when it comes to estate planning? Like, where is the they, pet going to go? Well, very, very many of them. Actually, I have no idea where he's going to go, actually. I haven't had that case, <laughs> but, but What do you tell your clients who have a pet? Well, you know, it, I think I think in, in some aspects, maybe it's good. I'm the shoemaker who has holes in their shoes because they're too busy fixing other people's. Um, Florida does allow pet trusts. Uh, so you can actually set aside money in a trust. For somebody to take care of your animal, most people are their their families already agree that if there are any animals living when that person dies, they they will take care of it. Um, other other people don't know. I mean, I got one of my cats uh, from a woman from a family where this poor this poor cat, both of his owners had died within the space of ninety days. I mean, it was horrible. And um, one of the women at church put out a, a plea, and I had lost a cat I'd had for 18 years and wasn't getting another one. And then a friend called and said, are, is, are you ready for a cat? And I went, oh, my gosh. So, yes. So I went and got George. George was his predecessor. Uh, and um, and, and it's, a, it's a real consideration. I had one client who put aside, had, at the time we did his documents, they had five cats. So they put aside a good bit of money for a specific person to take care of the cats. Now, if when the two of them die, they have one cat, that person gets all that money. If they have five cats, they get enough. Um, and it's a really important consideration. And I know people who, um, once a, a cat, die, an animal dies, they won't get another for that fear. For that fear that if I, if I die before the animal, who's going to take my animal? It's a big question. So thank I really and I really do appreciate you bringing it up because I've thought about that. That um, you know, though that they're watching, thinking like any any other profession, you have it all together. Trust me, <laughs> I I haven't well, figured this one know, out. My Sophia has two cats, and both of her sisters love the cats. And I was thinking, what happens if God forbid something happens to Sophia? If it's not in the will. Which sisters get the cats? Well, they can fight over it, but you get the cats actually because they've lived with you. It's more than what happens after that. Because you love ah. the cat. I mean, Ralph is. Didn't you tell me Ralph is one of the cats? Right, Ralph. Yeah. So right. Ralph so, looks exactly so, like your cat. Exactly. Right. And I want you to know he showed up at three minutes to nine because he must have known you were. <laughs> I told. I told. I told, I told Rebel. You no, know, he knows it's the last Monday of the month, so here he is to see Steve. Yeah. Um, that's a great. I'm glad you asked that question. I'm going to start asking people. So thank you. That was that. I really appreciate that. Well, you know what? This show always goes by so fast. Debbie, give everybody your phone number and your okay. website address. Okay. So my phone number here in Tampa is eight one three five eight six one three three two eight. 813-586-1332. Um, and my website is London, like the city, LondonBakerLaw.com. People drop out the law sometimes, but it's LondonBakerLaw.com. 
Email is debbaker at London Baker Law. Um, guys, I've told people, if you don't live in Florida, I can't do paperwork for you. But if, you, if you're listening outside Florida, you know people and they just have a question. I'm driven to be of service and I'll ask, I'll answer any question with the caveat that if you live in Georgia, you got to find a Georgia lawyer. But it's general general questions about how to ask. And I, I love to help. And I love doing this show. This show is so much fun. <laughs> Uh, we love having you. Debbie, thank you so much. Have a wonderful Easter. I will. I will. I will. And feel better. God bless you. Yeah, you too. Thank you, Debbie. So long. That's attorney Debbie Baker. She is a wonderful estate planning attorney. We love having her on. That's it for us today. We'll be back again next week with more Ask the Experts. Thanks for tuning in today to the Ask the Expert show on W4CY Radio and Talk 4 TV. Tune in next week and every week to hear more from our experts on personal injury, insurance, air condition repairs, estate planning, Medicare, and many other topics in the areas of legal, health, financial, and home improvement. See you next week.